Good morning, Pod Squad. Happy Monday to all of you. I pray that you all are having or ready to have an amazing day, a proper prosperous day. I pray that you're ready to be positive on purpose, that you're ready to be happy on purpose, that you're ready to be intentional about your day and how your day goes and setting the tone for your day on purpose. Yesterday, if you caught my message, my most previous message prior to this is when is the last time you said I love you? Um, I spoke about how some people as a child were in homes where I love you was not said often. Maybe they didn't hear their fathers tell their mothers. Maybe they didn't hear their parents tell themselves. And it affects you even as an adult. You know, now you're married. Now you have your own family. And I love you is a thing that, you know, you're not used to saying because you didn't grow up in a house with it. I spoke about that yesterday. But today I want to do a continuation of part two. And some of you may be, you know, going through a season or just within a marriage or in a family where I love you is not being said, not necessarily because they didn't receive that from their homes or didn't hear that, you know, when they were children. Um, but God also started speaking to me about what about, you know, the ones that don't say it because they don't love themselves. And that's a pretty deep topic. That's a heavy topic. And it's a, um, necessary topic your spouse, you know, your your significant other, people sometimes have a hard time telling you that they love you or showing you that they love you when they don't love themselves. You know, the Bible says we need to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, but believe it or not, as unfortunate as it seems, there are people who, first off, don't even know how to receive God's unfailing love. You know, that love is priceless. That love is available to each and every one of us. There is you can't out grace. You can't out his love. God loves each and every one of us the same. There is nothing we can do that can make God change his love for us. But not only are they not receiving God's love, they don't love themselves. And if that is you or you know someone that is in that situation, you know, the reason I want to do a part two of this is because I don't want you to think that you're not hearing I love you just because they didn't hear it in their homes. You know, it may very well be that they're in a season or they're in a place in their lives where they don't love themselves. And as hard as it is for that individual to admit it, that is a, a true thing. That's a real thing. And it's a it's a big deal, you know, and it's a thing that's often just swept under the rug. It's often not talked about. But someone cannot possibly love you the way you deserve to be loved if they don't love themselves. And love starts from within. They have to receive God's unfailing love. They have to be able to love themselves before they can love you properly. And a lot of times that's that's something unintentional. So don't hold them to that. They're not at fault for that. They may be in a season of something they're going through um, unforgiveness with themselves or guilt with themselves or shame with themselves or just some internal battle or spiritual battle they may be going through that you're unaware of and it's hard for them to show their love or tell you how much they love you or tell you that they even love you you know because of the feeling that they don't love themselves and a lot of people um, they deny that they're not going to just walk around telling everybody oh I don't love myself you know that's something that's kept to themselves that's something that um, they're ashamed about. That's something they're embarrassed about. And some don't even know that's what they're going through. But I just want to encourage you to, again, this is another thing. If, if we seek God on this, especially those of you who are married, you know, you may be wondering why aren't you hearing that from your spouse? Well, your spouse can't completely love you the way God intended for them to love you if they don't first love themselves. So make that part of your prayer. You know, ask God, um, allow my spouse, allow my significant other, allow my uh, loved one to willingly receive your unfailing love. Help them to love themselves so they can then in return love me properly. You can hoop and holler. You could tell them until their face turns blue, you know, to say I love you in return or to show that. But again, if someone does not love themselves, they cannot possibly love you. And that does not go even just for couples, you know, for marriages. It also goes for parents with children. If you don't love yourself, you can't properly love your children, right? You can easily say, I love you, but there's still a void there. There's still a gap there. And I'm not saying that 
anyone, please don't take my message out of context. I'm not saying that if you don't love yourself, you don't love your spouse, you don't love your children, don't love your loved ones, but we can't love them to their fullest extent because we don't love ourselves first. Like I said, the Bible does say, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, you can't give your late, you can't give your neighbor a love that you don't have. You can say it, but there's still a void with it. So any of you that may be experiencing that, you know, whether it's children with their parents, parents with their children, wives with their husbands, husbands with their wives, it doesn't matter. If you feel like you're the recipient of that and not getting that love or hearing those three magical words that mean more than, you know, many people like to believe, ask God, you know, to help your spouse or your significant other or your parent or your child. Ask God to help them to receive his love first. Because they have to receive God's love. They have to then love themselves. And in order for them to love you, they have to love themselves first. But I guarantee you, if you start asking God to show you these things within yourself, within your spouse, within your loved ones, he will reveal these things to you. And the enemy wants you to think, oh, so-and-so doesn't love you. So-and-so doesn't say it, so they don't love you. Well, what if that so-and-so has, is having issues and they don't love themselves in this season? Then also, not only are you asking God to heal their hearts or bring them to a place to where they will surrender to him or, you know, um, receive his love to love themselves and love you. Don't make it just about you. Ask how you can extend God's love, how God can extend his love through you as well, how you can be a vessel, you know, for him to bring that person closer to God, to draw them nearer to God how you can pour out more of God's love, how you can, how God can change your heart to pour out his love, how God can fill your mouth with the words of loving words, of God's words, of words of truth, of words of light, of words of encouragement, words of positivity, words of hope, words of empowerment. So the same way you may be wanting to get love for someone or receive that love from someone and you're asking God to help them get to that place of loving themselves so they can love you properly, don't just make it about you. Also ask God to help you show them the love that they need in this season. To make you a vessel to where his love can just shine and pour out through you. To where his light can shine through you, where you could be a beacon of his light. When you go to God with this and you have a, your heart posture is right, God will not only heal that person's heart and draw them in closer to him and do the things that you're asking, but he'll also do those for you in return because you're not just doing it for self. You're also, you know, trying to be the strength that they need, be the love that they need, fill those gaps and voids that only God can do. But you're willingly surrendering yourself to allow God to use you as his vessel for his word, for his love, for his light. Sometimes the things that, you know, an uh, individual needs, even though God is the one that provides that, oftentimes, you know, he uses vessels, he uses people. So he will bring people into their lives to pour out his love, to speak words of his truth, words of his light, words of his revelation, words of his love, words of his confirmation. Ask God to, to use you in that season. Ask God to uh, speak through you, to let your heart just pour out his love like never before. I hope this message encourages you. So therefore, like I said, if, if you're one that can relate to the first earlier podcast, of maybe being in at home and not hearing the words, I love you, so therefore it's not in your household. You can be that curse breaker and start that generational blessing and speak those words now, you know, into your husband, into your children, so they can always know that they heard those three words in their home and they can set the tone for their family and their for their marriages. But if you're one who can relate to this message to where maybe that individual doesn't love themselves pray for god to get them to that place where they can love themselves because that is the only way they can properly love you in return but also pray that god uses you to show his love and to pour out his love you all be blessed y'all have an amazing day thank you so much for listening i appreciate all of your support don't forget to share this and i will catch you guys on the next episode bye